Good to see everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I feel like the last eight months have flown by, um, and now we're finally to game week. So excitement in our building and within our organization. Um, you know, we've got a, a structured week in front of us. So for us, we're gonna our players will will practice on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll do a sprint through. Um, work in the afternoon before we go to the hotel and then a day set up of meetings. Um, we're, we're on pace and on track to where we need to be. I think our, our depth is starting, at least for this week, we're starting to figure out uh, who will be um, in an active role and who we can count on to get in position to play winning football. Uh, it's always a, a work in progress, and tomorrow will be a, a big emphasis on what that looks like for our structure of who's going to be with the ones, with the twos, how's that rotation look. Uh, our Tuesday and Wednesday practices are set up where it's a lot of, obviously, looks against our opponent, but also uh, we still will continue to do good on good work uh, throughout the course of the season because I think it's important that you get as good a speed as you can get uh, working against each other. And there's you got to be smart. You got to practice the right way, but our our system is will take over now the approach of what our in season structure of practice looks like, and and our kids understand that we did last week. We did a Monday practice and a Tuesday practice uh, for what this week will look like. So they they've got an expectation on what those two days look like. Back in the spring, we did a Thursday Friday in season. So uh, the repetitions of that are so important. The emphasis on the preparation on what that takes by position, not only on the field, but the practice habits, um, sleep, you know, controlling the hydration and your diet, and then also the film study. And every position coach has set things on what we need to get accomplished day in and day out to be in position to hopefully play as good as we can play on, on Saturday. So um, from a health standpoint, I think we're about as good as we can be coming out of, of fall camp, which is exciting. Um, I think we've got an opportunity uh, to be able f about as as uh, full full strength as we can be, and you know a lot of things can happen between now and Saturday, but I think a lot of that credit goes into uh, our our sports medicine area, uh, our nutrition area, and and most certainly uh, strength and conditioning and Jeff Fish. So I'm um, excited where that looks for our team. Uh, coaching staff has done a nice job on putting together a game plan for week one. We, we obviously know that there are a number of changes that will take place throughout the course of the game, in-game adjustments, um, how that looks, how well can we be a step ahead, what changes can we make to give our kids an advantage to go play fast. And um, then at 1 o'clock, we get to tee it up and go play. So exciting to, to be at home for our first game and uh, to get into the routine and the flow of what our game weeks look like. So with that, I'll take any questions. And thanks again for being here and covering our team. First one for you personally at UNLV, right? Just how long have you kind of been envisioning this week? And what are you looking forward to you know, the most on the personal level? About yeah, personal I mean, this trying to take more of, of that out of it, I, I respect the question. So I've, I've looked forward to it since December 6th and maybe even December 5th or 4th whenever Harp and I had the first conversation. Um, you know, I'm excited to be in this role, in, in the chair of being a head coach. I'm honored to have the opportunity to lead this team. Uh, I feel great responsibility to get our program back to where we need to be in competing and winning championships. And this will be the first step of what the the competition looks like. And we all know that it's a results-driven business. Um, we're, we're judged on results, not effort. So now's the time, and, and we get a chance for three and a half hours on Saturday for our first one to, to see how good we can get the team. But uh, personally, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, you know, I'm excited to take this team into the arena for the first time. I'm ready to see how we compete, and I, I challenged them I think it was Friday evening. We don't need to be anybody other than who we are. Don't you've done the, you've done the work, and now we've got work yet left to do. But um, if we'll prepare like it's a nameless, faceless opponent, and we'll get in position to uh, take our team bottom line and play one snap at a time, and and do it with great energy and enthusiasm, 
uh, will play really well. And so that's the challenge between now and then, continue to talk about that message and uh, be who we are and go execute. What goes into naming your captains? Yeah, I think we waited a little bit later um, into fall camp. It's a team vote. And, uh, you know, everybody in the – we had 110 guys in camp, and they all got a vote. Voted for two on offense, two on defense, tallied them up, and, and I think that's a really good reflection of what the team thinks that who our leaders are. So um, I wanted them to have the say in who the captains are. I think that's important. Uh, but then also every week – at some point, we will name another captain to have five each week. So we're excited about the four that we have. I think they all are leaders in different ways, some more vocal than others, some by example. Um, but overall, I think it's a, a great representation of our program. Specifically, why choose Amani Trick right on the O-line, on and off the field? Yeah, I think you look at what, what Amani has done, really, and I told him the other day, if, if somebody would have told me in January that you were going to be the team captain, um, I would have been surprised. And uh, not – he wasn't – it wasn't because of something he wasn't doing. This – he would work on the field, off the field, in the weight room. I really never heard him lead and speak. Um, so I think he has grown in that role with respect of the team and, and um, really in every situation, I'm, I'm proud of him. And uh, I think he can be a tremendous leader for us. Coach, this season in college football, the clock doesn't stop after a first down. I want to ask you, how does this rule impact you, this rule change, uh, the way that you call a game? I would imagine that it's difficult to get substitutes on the field, and it might favor teams that are uh, that they play the time of possession game. Yeah, it, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at what that really will impact. And I, I know I, I saw a quick study after week zero games I think it was five to seven plays difference in a game in totality, but also it still took the same amount of time because of advertising minutes. So um, offensive guys are always going to find a way to get their plays. Um, and I say that respectfully. Someday, long from now, when I'm retired, I'm going to be the, official, the head of officials in all of college football. <laughs> And I'm going to sway it back in the defensive favor on substitution on all those things. So we've got to understand that. We've got to understand game planning. Um, and, and we do. We've, we've spent a lot of time talking about what that's going to look like. And then you look at it on the defensive side, uh, you know, the, the structure of making the call, getting the sub, matching the substitution. Uh, so I, th I think before, you know, at the uh, – at the end of the season, we'll get a better feel because we'll have more information to work with on really did it change the game that much? Uh, and if so, do we need to make adjustments? On the defensive side with the, uh, the pace of play now on the defense becoming more important, do you see yourself, especially in the defensive backfield, allowing the players to self-substitute or is that going to be something that's communicated more throughout the beginning of the year? No, we'll, we'll substitute. We'll have a set plan going in and they change. We'll have a set plan that we'll We'll start visiting um, as a staff tomorrow after tomorrow's practice, and then Thursday we'll set the what the game rotation will be, uh, and they adjust with injury and the you know as you're mentioning the pace of play. But um, I'm not going to throw somebody on the field that's not ready to go try to play winning football uh, because of pace of play. So we'll get enough guys ready to go. There'll be a rotation and and. Um, Hopefully, we can stick as close to that as possible. We make a lot better decisions on a Thursday afternoon in the calm of a meeting than trying to make those decisions throughout the course of a game um, in, a, in, a, in a crazy environment. We talked about Doug's growth last night, but what do you want to see from him this week? Yeah, I think you get into game week for all the quarterbacks, uh, the importance of understanding the game plan. Um, we've had enough reps now for him to exude confidence, uh, the leadership that we're looking for, and then above everything else, taking care of the ball. I think that's so important. Um, there's going to be time to take shots down the field. There's going to be times you know, for him to tuck the ball and run. Just protecting the ball is so important, especially in early games. Um, you know, the turnover margin needs to be in our favor, and a lot of that will be on how the quarterback plays. Coach, you've gone through the spring and now the fall, and you're a week out, out. You mentioned you want this team to be who it is. 
kind of what is this team? If you had to describe this team, we'll we'll see you Saturday. Exactly. Well, and you know, I've said our, our our practice habits will become game day reality, and and that's so true. And how we practice on the field, if they're good habits, they're gonna they'll show up when the lights are on, and if they're bad habits, they're gonna be exposed. So. You know, I want a team that is disciplined, that plays extremely hard. They, they care about each other and play with great enthusiasm for each other, Se celebrate the success of our team uh, in all three phases, and for 60 minutes, lay it all out there. Play as hard as you can play, uh, almost with blinders on. Just be in the moment, get in the flow of the game, enjoy playing the game. They work so hard to get this one guaranteed opportunity. Um, let's have some fun with it. What uh, went into the decisions when sorting out kind of the depth chart of your running back room? Yeah, I think you look at really from when we started early August on protecting the ball, understanding of the offense, being able to block uh, and protect, and then how they catch the ball out of the backfield. Those would be five of the things that really went into those decisions. I do think that we'll play a, a number of running backs throughout the course of the season, uh, not just the two or three that were on the, the initial depth chart. Um, I would say that will be more by committee, especially as we get into um, you know weeks two, three, and four down the, down the stretch. Do you have any specific goals for kind of each of the phases of the game uh, for Saturday? Well, I mean, ultimately, um, you mean the objectives in, in yeah. all three? Win will be the most important. And uh, then offensively, defensively, and kicking, they've got all different bitch marks we try to hit that usually if you hit those, they align in winning. Uh, turnover margin, I, I mentioned, eliminating explosive plays on, on defense. And then in the kicking game, one of the big ones is average starting position, field position. And that, that's something that we track. Uh, that really doesn't go in the, in the stats uh, a lot that are noticed, but that is so important to really the outcome of the game. Coach, when you see what the Aces have done and the Golden Knights have done here in our city, um, does that inspire you to, to go out there and put off a winning team this season? Absolutely. I think we all learn from our surroundings and the experiences that others are going through. And that would be one for us because it's home, it's here, and and – the success that they've had, the reasons, and then the effect of that with the city, how important that is. We need college football to be important in the city, and I feel that responsibility. Coach, uh, kick return, punt return by committee? Yeah, we'll have a little more clarity on that tomorrow. I think Jacob DeJesus right now would have the lead uh, in both areas. But, um, there's also uh, Dom Jacinto, uh, Irvin, uh, Jet Thomas and Jare Williams all all have an opportunity in in both areas. Um, I think they they all bring something to the return game that that can benefit our team. When you talk about your defense limiting explosive plays, what do you consider an explosive play? Like, what's the? Uh, yeah, it'd be a 15 yard run uh, or a 20 yard pass. So you know we we need to be um, in. You know we've got areas we want to hit in that. And if you do, then you've played a pretty good defensive game. Um, so usually, if you can uh, you know, stop the chunk plays uh, and make the offense drive the field, your success rate goes way up. So that and third down defense, you know, the, the longer the third down yardage is, obviously the defensive percentage usually goes up. So you got to be good on first down, uh, get them behind the sticks on second down, and then hopefully get them in the third and seven plus. Those are all things that um, that we target and uh, their success that usually follow those those areas. You mentioned Jure. It looks like you guys are just playing base nickel on defense. Just kind of what went to that decision? Hey, he's played a lot of spots. Uh, he's played the high safety on the roof. He's, he's played the nickel position. He's got position versatility and he's a smart football player IQ wise. Um, and he's a playmaker. He understands, you know, he's good in man coverage. He understands the zone concept and filling the, the run fit, setting the edge of our defense. Uh, he's done a nice job of that through fall camp. So those are all things that went into him at that spot. And then also, 
you know, depending on situation and personnel grouping, we can move him around at a couple of different places, and that speaks to to his knowledge of the defense and then just the way that he plays. Coach, are there any different, uh, like, personal emotions for you uh, going a week out from a season, whether it's Arkansas, Missouri, Memphis, whatever, now here at UNLV? Is it, is it the same? Is it different? I probably get a little more cranky if you were able to ask my family that question, uh, which is a bad trait, I would think. Uh, I've tried to work on that. Um, I'm just, I'm anxious for a team. I want to go play well. I want to make sure that our staff has done every single thing that we can do to give our kids an advantage. Um, I think I'm better over the years through experience. I think that becomes so there's there's always something new, right? There's a, something. There'll be something I want to walk out of here of, of uh, an issue you need to address. So that, that doesn't ever change day to day. Um, you've got a 110, 18 to 22 year old. You've got 110 sons plus two at home and a daughter. There's going to be some things you, you navigate through each day. Um, but I think perspective, I also look at uh, the reality of the opportunity that I'm in. I'm very thankful. Um, and again, I'm, I'm honored to be the head coach here. Uh, my family's uh, really enjoyed getting to know Vegas. Uh, I'm thankful for Eric Harper uh, for the opportunity because these, these jobs are hard to get. And uh, then you pour into it and you understand how impactful you can be with your staff on, on your student athletes. And um, it is a game. Uh, we want to win. Also, there's so many things that go into getting to game day uh, that are built over time. and and can be uh, so rewarding in the relationship piece and the human element of what sport is. Looks like you have two place kickers listed. I guess how is that going to work for the first game? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think Jose has, has earned the job and extra point and field goal. Uh, if we are maybe a longer attempt, uh, we could see the other guy kind of depends also. I need to see him and, and Coach Chivas need to see him Thursday, Friday, and in in game warm up on uh, how we're looking there, um, but I feel com comfortable in in both of those guys, and I've got our team has confidence. We've seen it day in and day out, either in a two minute situation or or field goal period that um, they've been very very steady, and a lot of that goes from the snapper to the hold to the kick, and then the protection. So um, I feel like we've got um, an area there in special teams that that can be an advantage for us. Coach, you talked about the city of Las Vegas being behind your team. Can you expand a little bit more on the importance of the city of Las Vegas coming out to this first game? Yeah, it's so huge. Yeah, I want you look at student athlete experience. You look at what does that look like for this team? I think there's excitement, there's energy. Um, you start to feel some of the passion. We know we need to win, uh, but we also understand how important people in the stands, how that can create an atmosphere for student athletes and their experience, but then also a home field advantage would be huge for us. And we need to create that um, for a number of reasons. And I think the, the opportunity for college football to be back in this city, uh, we need to embrace it. The city needs to embrace it. I need to give them a reason to be in the stands. There you go. Good ending, thank you. I do, this, not running, I don't really care if, if it's running or not. I'm going to say it. I, I appreciate the work that you guys have done covering our team. And uh, hopefully it's been beneficial to give you information you need to cover our team. Uh, we've got a lot of unique, really cool stories with individuals on our group, uh, either team or staff members or whatever. And I, I appreciate you telling our story. Uh, that, that I'm, I'm thankful for that, thankful for the job that you guys do. Let's have a great fall. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Third question. Hey, Doug. Uh, so today, a lot of schools named their starting quarterback for this Saturday's game. How does it feel going into this season with the stability of knowing that you're number one? Um, really, it's just it keeps us a step ahead in preparation. You know, we we, we have our mission focus right now, and um, we're really just focused on our goal, and that's just preparing for week one and uh, attacking it head on. A question for both of you. How important is it for you to, as individual players, to be named team captains? Yeah, it's huge. Um, it's a very big honor. It means a lot to me personally. Um, 
I'm very thankful for my teammates for looking at me as a leader. Um, it's very big. Uh, definitely, this is my first time being a preseason captain. So um, it, gives, it gives you a lot of confidence going into the season, knowing that your guys are behind you and uh, looking for you to make plays. On the captain front with uh, Amani Trigg Wright, why do you think he was named captain? And, and just talk about what he's done on the offensive line now over the years. Uh, really just his demeanor on and off the field. You know, Trigg, that's, that's like Uncle Trigg. You know, he's always doing the right thing. He just, he just seems like he knows what he's doing and he leads guys in the right direction. Um, and really, he's just been doing that on the field with the O line, just pushing them forward, leading them out there, getting everything set, you know, just doing his job. Doug, how do you feel after this fall camp with Barry Odom? Um, great, you know, feel more prepared than I've ever been. Uh, I said something to Coach the other day. I was like, I've never like sweat this much or worked this hard at practice like ever before, you know, and that's just proof in the pudding. It's time to go out there and show, show what we've been putting in. What are some of y'all's expectations for this first game? You know, what would you, besides a win, what do you guys need to do for this first game to be success? Yeah, I, was, I know you said besides win, but that's the main thing is win. Uh, play as a team, play together, um, execute. Um, but yeah. Um, definitely, just to piggyback on what uh, Woody said, winning is the, the biggest goal there. But uh, another thing we want to focus on is just trying to be as perfect and just perfect as possible, minimal mistakes out there, just playing our game. Jackson, what's it been like for you seeing uh, Coach Odom at, at Arkansas and then here in a, in a new setup where you guys are both having some early success? Yeah, um, it's amazing that he's here. It's amazing what he's done here already. Um, he's the same here as he was at Arkansas. Um, phenomenal coach. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's really taking this team and um, taking us to the next level. Um, showed us what hard work really means and what it means to go to work to get the results. Um, I think everyone's bought in. Um, but yeah, he's, he's great. Hey, Doug, uh, left-handed quarterback and Coach Marion the other day, according to him, he said that they flipped the field a lot with a lot of plays for you. Uh, how much more comfortability do you have? Uh, you know, I tell Coach Marion every day, like, you don't have to flip it. Like, I can go both ways. and. I, I kind of been doing that my whole life, going the opposite way, um, which is comfortable for me. But um, it does add that just a little bit more comfortability into the plays and just seeing it differently and just it's just a little, just slightly easier, not too much, you know. But it is good. Doug, what a uh, what transformation or, or progress have you seen with the O line this fall camp? Um, really just their, their brotherhood and togetherness. You know, um, I would say earlier in camp and spring ball, they were kind of working and blocking as individuals. And now you see them working together, communicating. And it just, it looks like they're just dancing together. You know, it's, it's, it shows complete growth. Doug, uh, Jacob DeJesus has gotten a lot of attention this offseason. But Ricky White is a guy who's coming back. You had a, a good connection with him last year. He's very productive. Um, how do you see him working into the offense in week one, uh, particularly you know, down the field? Uh, really both of them uh, making plays wherever they're needed on the field. You know, um, Jacob is a slot guy. He, he's really quick and elusive. You know, he can make plays in short yardage and down the field, and so can Rick. You know, Rick is easily one of the smoothest players on the field, and he can make plays down the field and in short passes. So I expect a big game out of both of them. Doug, can you just talk about your um, connection with the running backs? Um, you know, the, those are my guys. I got with them uh, when they transferred in. Uh, BD, um, Donovan Lester, Jet Thomas, um, those young guys, they are just kind of took them along under my wing when they first got here because we're the backfield. You know, we, we probably communicate the most out of anybody on the field, you know, every play. Um, either they're telling me something they see or I see something, and I'm checking in with them. So um, really just wanted to build that bond early on, and I felt like we did a good job doing that. Uh, this fall camp was very similar to an SEC fall camp. Um, what have you seen as, as fall camp wraps up? What have you seen from your defense? Um, a lot of growth. Uh, the physicality has definitely increased. Um, that was a big thing for our defense. Uh, we want to play tough. We want to fly around, swarm the ball. Um, and I think the conditioning level has grown throughout the camp. So we are able to fly around, swarm the ball, uh, play fast, play physical. Um, but yeah, it's it's just like SEC practice, and um, guys have stepped up and treated it just like that. 
Jackson facing a mobile quarterback. Is this going to be assignment with football? How important is gap responsibility? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I think gap responsibility in any game is important, especially when you have a quarterback that can run. Um, so that's that's definitely going to be an emphasis, being where you're supposed to be. Um, so yeah. Doug, what are some of the parts of the new offensive system that play best to your strengths? Um, really just our ability to cut the uh, play three ways, you know. Um, that's something Coach Marion really stresses is you have multiple options. There should be three touchdowns in every play. You know, I can hand it off, I can keep it myself, or I can play the RPO. So really just the, the versatility and the options. Doug, you guys have had one of the best kickers uh, around for the past couple of years. Um, now with, with Jose coming in, you work with him in practice, you guys do a two-minute drill at the end of every session. Like, What's your, your confidence level in him? What have you seen from him stepping in now as the, as the place kicker? Uh, Jose did a, uh, a very well, very good job stepping in um, for Goody. You know, he hasn't let me down yet in practice. So I put my whole my whole faith in him. You know, if we're in a situation we need a kick, I can believe that he'd get it done. For both of you guys, I guess, is there anyone who, you know, you feel like is flying a little under the radar on offense and defense who you're excited to see play uh, this weekend? Um, I'll say I'll start off with defense. I would say um, blessing our linebacker. He came in um, in the winter. You know he's done a good, great job under Woody transitioning from high school to college and just getting a good grip of the game. And then on offense, I'll probably say Jet Thomas, our freshman running back. He's did a good, great job as well coming in in the summer and just grabbing hold of the offense and making it his own. You know, so um, those two really stood out to me. Yeah, I'd say uh, blessing's gonna have a big year for us, and also Dre Williams. Um, he's really stepped up as a leader, um, but he flies around on the field, plays with a lot of energy. Um, it's going to be fun to watch him on Saturdays. Um, and then on offense, I, I would say the same thing. Jet Thomas, he's going to be a surprise for a lot of people this year. For both of you guys, the coach kind of talked about go out and be who you are this weekend. I'm trying to be someone you're not. If you had to describe this team, what is this team? Who are you guys? If you had to say this is what we're all about, this is who we are. Yeah, I think. It comes down to Coach Odom's principles, hard, smart, tough. Um, and that's, that's who we are. We're hard, we're smart, we're tough. Um, but we also love each other. We want to play for each other, fly around, play fast, play with energy. Um, yeah. Definitely, like one big family out there. You know, I feel like every player on this team is my brother. And I feel like we reflect that in our play. You know, I'm, I'm playing as if that's my brother and we share the same uh, mom and dad out there. You know, I'm protecting him and I believe that he's protecting me. So I feel like we're just one big family out there. In building that kind of trust with for both of you guys, were there any team bonding activities that kind of jumped out over the spring and summer that helped kind of build that, that chemistry? We, you know, we didn't do a big team bonding outside of football because we're out here practicing, sweating, blood, sweat, and tears every day with each other. Um, and I think that's team bonding in itself. Um, being able to practice and, you know, talk a little smack to your teammate, you know, Doug, I'm sitting there, you know, messing with him. And that's how you build confidence in each other and also just build that family type brotherhood. Yeah, definitely going through those those uh, winter workouts and spring workouts, just the, how tough they were, like just getting through those pains and those gains together. It just brings you together. You know, we're, we're suffering from the same the same 110 degree heat out here grinding. You know, we feel the same pain. So um, it, that tends to bring you together and then just Hanging out together outside of football, you know, um, a lot of us stay in the same area, and if not, you know, you know, we would make that drive to hang out with our teammates, watch the fight or a game or anything, you know, just spend as much time as possible together. Doug, what are you specifically working on with Coach Fish to try and stay healthy this season? Um, really just my mobility, upper body and lower body, just uh, staying as flexible as possible, uh, being able to take multiple hips and my body being able to move in different ways that is normally not supposed to. Jackson, as a transfer, how excited are you to get into Allegiant Stadium and play for the city of Las Vegas? Very excited. Um, I said it when I was on here last time. The city of Las Vegas, I think it's the best city in the United States. It's growing as a sports um, city, and Allegiant is one of the best venues there is. Um, I got to be in there for the spring game, and it's, it's insane. Um, so I'm very excited. Coach Odom was just uh, talking about the importance of developing you know, fan support and creating a home field advantage. What would you say to um, the community to get them to come out and watch us see? What would you tell them about this group? You know, um, 
we spend a, around 340 days a year pouring our hearts out into this, this program in this city, you know, and we just ask one thing just for the fans to come out for a couple hours on a Saturday evening and just, just watch us play our hearts out for y'all every week. Thank you. 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 Thank you.